Hi everybody, welcome for another video. You can see I've got a bunch of mess on the table. I got a new tripod that I'm using that I'm not quite sure what I think of. Um, I think it would be good like on the go. Um, but it's, it's interesting. I um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm actually not coughing that much today. I don't have much of a voice back again, but I'm um, not coughing that much. But I have something that I've been working on. You've seen me post photos of my carnation. Let's see, I also made In my little sketchbook here, I did, um, let's see. These you already have, the little mushroom guy. And this was something new right here. Yeah, I'm not sure I like this tripod. Maybe for like small up close things, but uh, not this. I did this little uh, plant with book on books. Let's see. I'm gonna get my other one out. We'll be back. Hi, we're back again. <laughs> this, I think, is better. The It has a longer arm. It just makes so much more sense. Um, let me, there's the carnation. These are the little mushroom guys. A more realistic mushroom, some apple and leaves. And then I did these two mushrooms. And then, um, I guess it was just last night, I did two more mushrooms. Yeah. And then I'm thinking of, there's not many pages left in this sketchbook. This is um, US Art Supply. I bought this with another one. I thought they were, um, because of the way they look and the way the ad on Amazon was written, I thought they were um, Strathmore sketchbooks, you know, for just pencil, because they're uh, 90 pound paper, so it's not really watercolor paper and um so this is what i started towards the end of last year using as my daily drawing and i did lots of sketches in these last year i haven't done as much sketching the last few months because um uh, it's, it's been busy and I've been sick and, yeah. And I don't think I used any, I did a little bit of watercolor towards the back. Yeah, that's it. Um, just mainly pencil and colored pencil. Um, but it came with two. So I thought, well, let's finish using these because you know, it's not great paper. I mean, it's not meant for watercolor. Let's leave it at that. Because I did um, some colored pencil stuff at the beginning, some swatches, and just seeing if a couple of different blends, brands blend well. A couple of with watercolor, with colored pencil, um, metallic <laughs> colored pencil, watercolor and colored pencils. Planning out some things, watercolor, color pencil, and these are watercolor. I mean, it doesn't bleed through, but I'm also not using that much water. We'll put it at that. I'm thinking of wanting to do, um, like, try to draw a hydrangea here. Um, <clears throat> you'll hear the, you might hear the husband cough because <clears throat> he unfortunately caught what I had. Um, it wasn't COVID, but we had all the symptoms of COVID. Even the, um, 
what was that one? No taste. My taste still isn't back. But again, we tested negative for COVID on multiple tests, so. And here's the pretty little carnation that we finished. Um, but what I'm wanting to do, I've been watching Romany on Romany's Realm on Wednesdays. She does a, um, a YouTube Live, which is kind of like the art class that she does on Saturdays, but it's, you know, one anyone can come and she just does art. I, so I guess it isn't exactly like her art class, but you get to watch her do art. And, and she was using gouache the last week or so, and she had this cute little palette. And um, I was gifted from Arteza, oh, about a year or two ago. It was before COVID, <laughs> um, this 60 set of gouache. And um, so I was, I wanted to use my gouache, but you know, I didn't want to carry around a bunch of tubes and, uh, and so what, since there's 60 in here and this only has four, eight, 16, um, you know, I, I, I had to sort through and um, decide what am I going to, you know, put in here. But one thing I liked about this is normally if you're to put gouache in a palette, it's gonna dry out. But this has this silicone kind of like barrier stop. And what it does is it will keep the gouache moist, which is what you want. So I thought it looked interesting. Amazon, like $12. I'll link it below if you need. Um, and I thought that way I could, you know, use some of my gouache. And then I kept thinking like, well, there's 60 gouache in here. What am I gonna pick? Um, and I just, I thought of like, what are things that I, I paint? What are, the, what are things that I draw? Well, I draw like landscapes and nature and flowers and bumblebees and birds and things like that. So I wanted to have, you know, a mixture of easy colors, but also some colors I could possibly blend if I needed to. So the first color I grabbed was lemon yellow. So we're just gonna put these four, five, six, seven, eight, and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had 16. <clears throat> and these are the order that they're gonna go in here. So we've got lemon yellow. And I haven't had these open since I first got them. So we'll kind of see. And if you look, they're quite deep wells. I'm just gonna put a little bit in. I'm not gonna fill it up completely because, you know, what if I decide, hmm, lemon yellow's not the right yellow or, so there we go, lemon yellow. This one right here is, I thought yellow ochre since I do use a lot of yellow ochre. Sorry, still have a sore throat. So that's yellow ochre. And then I thought I would go with saffron orange. Should I have chosen another? No, that's a good color. I'm thinking because I like to do, you know, come fall pumpkins. <laughs> I thought that would be a nice color. <coughs> 
and then I chose vermilion red. I've been using vermilion quite a bit for, I've been using vermilion on those mushrooms, those red topped mushrooms. The main color I used was vermilion hue, watercolor. So there's the first row. The second row, I decided to go with crimson red uh, because of like my fall flowers and um, trees and there we go. I know it's not like a typical red, you know, that most people would choose. Now, I've got some greens here. This is sage green. These greens will make sense when you think of my artwork. Okay. Sage. Oops. It had a little crusties in it because <laughs> it hadn't been opened. <clears throat> then we have olive green. If you think of any of my artwork. And I'm just squeezing a little bit in. And the last green we have is sap green. Which, this sap green, I don't know if I'd call it sap green. It looks more like grass green or like a, other brands would call it like, Derwent would call it like foliage. So there's the first eight. <clears throat> now we have cerulean blue. I love cerulean blue. It's a great color to use for skies or to use for like water scenes cerulean blue and these are all just arteza it says premium gouache here is sky blue which will be just a little bit lighter <clears throat> then we have ultramarine which is a good mixing blue. For not opening these or touching these for um, a few years, they're actually in really good condition. And then I picked one of my favorite blues. This is Prussian blue. Love Prussian, Prussian blue really nice deep blue kind of a um not quite indigo but and then I did pick a purple I picked violet we'll put that one down here there's a violet I did pick a burnt umber That way I could have a brown already mixed. There we go. I was wanting to find a, um, like, Payne's gray or something like that. The only grays that they had in here were, like, gray or, like, pearl gray. Uh, there was no, um, you know, deep deeper gray which you know I can use some of these to mix something like it so I, I picked noir black um, I don't use much black but here we go so we have a black you know I can maybe take a little bit of black a little bit of violet and a little bit of the Prussian blue and get a really nice interesting color with some depth and then the last thing I grabbed was titanium white. There's a couple of whites in here. There's titanium white and white. And I thought the titanium white would be a little bit better for um, if I needed it to, to mix to a color or to add. 
I actually used white gouache on the mushrooms that I did. Um, these right here. I have this Liquitex acrylic gouache, uh, titanium white, and that's what I used for those. And it really did a good job. So I'm thinking a titanium white might be nice. <clears throat> so there we go. That's a great looking little set. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a sketch book, the passport size, and the standard size. And I'm gonna get a brush and some water and I'll be right back. We need jars. Okay, we're back. Now, I just need to find a... It's a small brush. What is that one? That's a number four. That'll work. So we have a couple of inserts. Let's make some space. I'm going to swatch in both, just, you know, why not? And what we're going to do is, because this is one-sided paper, this is the watercolor side, this is the back side of this. So we'll do the swatches here and here, and then right about them here. Now, so, here's the first color. Lemon, yellow, oops. I haven't used these um, gouache paints in a long time, um, so. This is yellow ochre. <clears throat> then this one is saffron orange. Oh 
Now the next one, the next color, is this really pretty vermilion. I love vermilion, it's such a great color. I like the name too. But see, isn't that a great red topped mushroom color? So pretty. Okay. Then the actual red red I chose is this one here. And it's a um crimson. Isn't that pretty? Now, the next color is a beautiful sage green. Look at here. It's a pretty little sage green. Here's my little yogurt jars here. Then we have our olive green. I love these colors for leaves and greenery and pretty grass and mountain shadows. And then this one, they, they say it's sap green, but to me it's like green the color of grass, you know? <clears throat> See, to me that's not sap green. That's just green green. Would that make sense? That's the one thing that I was kind of surprised. They didn't have any better, like, greens in there. But I thought that would be a good one for needing something like that shade. <clears throat> Next we had a um, cerulean blue. Whenever I think of cerulean blue, I think of a episode of The X-Files. The way they controlled a guy was saying, cerulean blue, cerulean blue. And it, you know, made him like, his mind blank and they were able to control him. <laughs> now the next color is sky blue. And there's two little doll up here. I'll do a little dollop here. But I'm thinking this would be a nice, you know, little travel palette of gouache. <laughs> or at least a, a way for me to have my gouache more easily accessible. Now this is ultramarine blue, which I like to use towards the dark end of a sky if I'm doing a, um, Sunset. See how pretty that is? And this is it with it pretty darn intense. Okay. And the 
last blue is Prussian blue. It's one of my favorite colors. I don't have many Daniel Smith watercolors, but one of the first ones I bought was Prussian blue. It's, I think that Daniel Smith is my favorite Prussian blue. I do have one by um, Rosa that is really nice, Rosa Galleria. And I do have another one by, um, what's that brand? <clears throat> Phoenix, that is really nice too. Well, which is also the same as the Zen Arts because they're the same, same thing. Then we have Violet right here. Let me kind of use most of the... Yeah. That looks really, really, really dark, that violet. Because I put it on kind of dark. It's actually a lot lighter than that. Let me see. Yeah, so these are quite intense. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Then this is the burnt umber. Just put a little. that down. Then we have a, uh, this, they, they call it noir black. And this last one probably won't show up because it is white. And the mainly reason to have it here is to just, if I need a color to stand out, you can see it a little bit. If you wanna mix it with someone, something, you can. So that there is the little gouache set. And what we're gonna do is, I happen to have a Sharpie S Pen here. We're gonna give each of these a number. Same thing with the Passaporta. Actually, I don't like that pen that much. It's been used a lot. <clears throat> Here, why don't we get my new one? Yeah. As I throw pens and rulers. <clears throat> okay, so here's that new one that I did an unboxing of. It's Kevlar and Stainless Steel by um, Bastion. So, number one is Lemon Yellow. Number 
two yellow ochre three saffron orange four is vermilion red five is crimson red six is sage green seven is olive green eight is sap green nine is I never know how to spell cerulean c-e-1-r ten is Sky blue. Eleven is ultra marine blue. Twelve is Prussian blue. Thirteen is violet. Fourteen is burnt umber. Fifteen is noir. And 16 is titan, titanium white. Let's do the same thing <clears throat> here. So this is a cute little palette. And of course you can see I didn't fill it up completely. I filled them up maybe halfway. And that way I can get the the brush in there or if I, you know, so choose to change uh, you know, my mind <laughs> that I want a different color in there. It won't be like it'll take forever to use it up. <clears throat> I'm looking for something. I could use the lid, but um, I'm going to take some of this olive green and mix a little bit of water with it because I'm new to gouache you know I'm really new and so I'm not really sure what is the best way to work with it And who knows, this probably isn't even the best brush to use with this. It's just a brush that I have that I'll also, it's not like it's one of my expensive brushes. The brand is Transon, I guess. It's a number four 
Um, I have a whole set of them. I got them on Amazon just to use with gouache and you know, you've seen me do like one project with gouache <laughs> and that was years ago. But just to show you, like that olive green, let me get a little bit of that burnt umber. Pick up a little more of that olive green. And I'm gonna mix a, a new shade of green. Something you can do is add browns to greens and, you know, it gives you a nice deeper shade. And I think that brown, we'll try and see what it does. to the um, sap green, because the sap green just looks grass green to me. Okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna take a little bit of the sap green. Let me get another card. Okay, see that looks just like green green, but there's the sap green. Let's clean off the brush. Grab just a little bit of that burnt umber. Just a little bit. And then we're gonna slowly work those two together. Let me grab a little water. And this will give us a beautiful green. I love adding burnt umber to greens to kind of deepen them. See, that was the original olive. That was with a little burnt umber added to it. <clears throat> See, look how pretty that is. Now if we kind of... Look at that. It's so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? So olive green, olive green with burnt umber, sap green with burnt umber. Let's do just a little so you can see what the sap green looks like by itself. Just add a little water to make it a little easier to flow. So here's, see the sap green. Just do a couple of little leaves. Since we're doing green, let me get another card. So what these are, they are um, like ID cards. I use them to wash, to wrap washi tape that I'm using on the go or little palettes like this because there's not enough space there to, you know, if I'm working on something. But, you know, you can throw a bunch of these in your bag and then they will just wash right off. <clears throat> so let's take the um, sage green, because we didn't do anything with sage green. So here's the sage green. And it's a really pretty sage green. It is, there's nothing... Let 
can see that just a really, might need a little more water. I do kind of grab it thick. See how pretty that is? Now, if we take just a little dab of the um, burnt umber, let me get a little more of the, that goes a long way because the sage green is so light. But now here's the sage green with Oop. look how pretty. And all that did was take three different greens sage, olive, and sap, and add burnt umber. Now, can you imagine if I added a little bit of a different color to it, what that would do? So that's <clears throat> six greens right there. So I just thought I would share a little <clears throat> video since I was so sick last week, I didn't have a chance to do a video, and I thought I would love to share putting together my new little mini gouache palette. And then all you do is take this, the silicone lid, it kind of fits in like that. Make sure you got it all. Okay. Put the lid on, and it is sealed and is airtight now. Look at that. What I'll do is I'll make sure that I link this, you know, down below or in the writing of the um, <clears throat> Patreon page, because um, it is, it was only like $12, and I think they had like a 5% off coupon, um, or at least when I bought it. Um, and it, you know, if you have Amazon Prime free shipping, it's a great little thing. And there you go. So that is gonna be my gouache palette that I use for a while. I thought I would <clears throat> show you how the gouache comes from, oh, uh, here they are. There's, these great little trays, and that way you can then, I think two of the greens were here. This one had that and that. It's a really good way to for them to store their uh, the gouache. See, there was the the one gray. I don't think there's. Oh yeah. And that's everyone, it looks like. It's a great little set of gouache, really. Well, it's not little, there's 60, 60 tubes. And each tube, like this one I didn't use. What was this one? Pale green or something like that. Yeah, pale green. They're 12 milliliters, so there's, you know, quite quite a bit of gouache to be had. 
60 colors. Okay, there we are. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.